The problem reads, a reservoir manometer is built with a tube diameter of 10 millimeters and a reservoir diameter of 30 millimeters. The manometer liquid is Merriam Red Oil with SG, specific gravity, equal to 0 0.827. Determine the manometer deflection in millimeters per millimeters of applied water pressure differential. And we're given this picture here. And I sourced this problem from this address. I believe it actually comes from a similar problem in Fox. So what we want to do is dissect this to be what we would actually see if we didn't, weren't given a picture and figure out what we're supposed to be doing here. So we're going to work through four steps. We're going to dissect the problem. We're going to see what we need to solve, then solve the problem, and then see what the solution means. You can click on any of these links to get directly to that section. So our first step is to dissect the problem. And what we have is a reservoir manometer with a tube diameter of 10 and a reservoir diameter of 30. We start with a manometer with no pressures attached. It's at equilibrium level, so the, the oil is at the same level in both reservoirs. The zero point in the tube reservoir is marked. And remember that this is the part that we actually see when we're working. And what happens is we, we connect it up to two pressures here. And in this case, what we're looking at over here again is that the level of the oil rises H millimeters in the manometer, in the tube reservoir of the manometer. So first of all, we can easily see that P1 must be bigger than P2, so that P1 presses down and the oil rises here. So that's the situation up to here. Determine the manometer deflection in millimeters per millimeters of applied water pressure differential. So what does that mean? So here we have our picture with the pressures connected and the oil level rises. And what we're actually thinking about is another situation where we've connected a water pressure differential manometer that measures in millimeters water. And here's P1 and P2. And this manometer deflects here by, let's say, HW. And what we're interested in is finding what is the manometer deflection H in millimeters per HW over here in differential pressure millimeters water. So this is what we're going to be solving for in the end. We're wanting to be able to measure this in millimeters and know something about what it would be if we had used a differential pressure manometer measured in millimeters water. End of part one. So this is our setup as we explained with the two types of manometers. And now we want to set up our equations. So we need to describe our system. Let's first describe this system. It's a static vertical system. So there's no shear forces and there's no angles. So it's static and it's vertical. So our only force is gravity. And then inside it and inside this one, we have a fluid that is a liquid, so it's incompressible. So the first thing we can conclude from those things is that P is only a function of Z, of verticalness. So this here says that the partial of P with respect to Z is actually a true differential of P with respect to Z. So we should be able to form an ordinary differential equation. The second part is that we have minus rho G here. The only force is gravity. And the fact that it's, we have liquids here means that this is a constant. So altogether, what does this give us? This gives us an ordinary differential equation, dp equal to minus rho g. And the constant part means that we can separate it, take it out front of our integrals. So we have like this. And this is from p1 to p2, z1 to z2. So solving this ordinary differential equation gives us by convention, we put that minus in to reverse the order here. And so instead of having P2 minus P1, we have P1 minus P2 
P2, and then a positive rho G. We're going to use this for our system, so we'll leave a space for that, times Z2 minus Z1. So this is our solution, and now let's apply it to our system. The first thing we would have is that rho is rho oil, and the second thing we have is that Z2 minus Z1 is delta H. Let's find the position of Z2. Z2 would be up here. So this is the number two position. This is the number one position down here. And delta H goes from the top of the oil here to the place where it's been displaced. So this is delta H. Delta H is little h plus this big H here. So delta H equals little h plus big H. And this is our one equation over here. Now let's look at our manometer here. We have P1 minus P2 is equal to rho water in this case times G times HW. HW is in millimeters of applied water pressure differential. So this is HW. And this here, manometer deflection in millimeters, is H. So as we said, we are looking for H divided by HW. This is what we want to find. Okay, so now we're on to part three where we solve the problem. So now we have two equations with P1 minus P2. Here's our other equation. And we're looking for H over HW. This one has HW. This one has a slight problem with that capital H. Rho W, G, HW. So Rho W, G, HW is equal to Rho oil, G, times little h plus big H. The G's cancel. And if we put rho w on this side, we get sg. So this means hw is equal to sg is rho oil over rho water. So sg times little h plus big H. And our problem is that we don't want this big H here. We only want little h. We want hw and h. So the question is, is big H a function of little h and other things we know here? And the answer is yes. Why? Because the volume of the oil has remained unchanged. So this volume that's displaced here must equal the volume that's created here. So volumes are the same. What's the volume at the left? Well, it's pi d squared over 4 times h, that's the volume at the left, that equals the volume at the right, which is pi little d squared over 4 times little h. Pi over 4 cancels. We solve for h, so we divide by big d squared. We get h equals little d squared over big d squared times little h. And now we're going to put this in place of h here. So we have HW, SG times, and let's factor out H. So we have one from this H here and little d squared over big D squared from there. We know SG is 0 0.827. We know little d is 10 millimeters and big D is 30 millimeters. So let's get our calculator and calculate that. We have HW equals 0 0.827 times parenthesis 1 plus little d is 10 squared divided by big D is 30 squared. And parenthesis enters. So this is 0 0.92. 0 0.92 times H. What did we want? We wanted H over HW. So H over HW is equal to one over this. So second one over, 1.1.
1.1. So the answer to a problem is h over hw is 1.1. End of part three. So part four is somehow interpret these results, that is to find the meaning of what we have. This is considered to be the sensitivity. H over HW is the sensitivity, so this is a more sensitive manometer than say something that had a lower value than 1.1. Another thing we could think about is how given H, how we would find HW, that's using this formula. And also we should remember that we used big D and little d as 30 to 10, and so everything that we've done shows the importance of manometer design and the choice of the gauge liquid on this sensitivity.